All right, so for this particular question, we have more of a theoretical conceptual question and we'll just have to work through the math and, tell, and then we'll get a gain and in intuition from it. So the statement reads, starting from the Lorentz force law in the form of the integral, show that the torque on a steady current distribution, not just a square loop, is uni in a uniform field B is M cross B. All right. So again, our torque here is M cross B, and the Lorentz force, which we found via the uh, back in the last chapter, was force magnitude equals the uh, integral of I cross oh, multiplied by the uh, cross product of DL with B. All right. So we need to start. We need to write this in terms. We need to write the torque in terms of the Lorentz force, and we know from classical mechanics that that's R cross F. So if we're taking a differential approach to this, dn is equal to r cross df. And then we'll integrate through and you'll see why later. The big thing here is that our only cross product in the integral is dl cross b. So that's why we want to set it up this way. All right, so if we do that, we have dn equal r cross df. And we know that df from the integral formulation is i dl cross b. So we have a double cross product here i is just a scalar so we can push it out as a constant and that we see here that we have a triple product so in the purple we know that we can re use the vector identity and um then apply this triple product identity so we have what's in purple what's in blue and what's in black and that's all the different combinations of the cross product ordering okay but again they all equal zero here so let's note that in the question, they said that B was constant, and here for the geometry, dr would equal dl. Thus, the derivative or the differential side of r cross r cross b, when we distribute the um, differential, would be dr cross r cross b in the cross product, or um, excuse me, the product rule. So that's why we have a plus in the middle. And then we have r cross dr cross b because B would be constant and that goes away. Okay, so further what we can say here now is that dr cross r cross b is equal to dl cross r cross b, and that would be uh, plus r cross dl cross b. So we just substituted in dl for dr, and again, let's note that B is constant, so any derivative of it would be zero. All right, further simplifying this thing, uh, we know that the cross product is anti-commutative, so we could change the order, but we have to put in a minus sign, so we do that. And we see here that uh, the blue term, when shifted over to the right, gives us dl cross b cross r, and that's equal to the purple term minus the differential term that we started with. So now what we can do is substitute this into the vector identity, which we first stated, and we can get some uh, combinations or cancellations or both. So substituting that in, we shove it down. We see that we simplify to the final line of purple, which is R cross uh, DL cross B is equal to one half of the uh, difference here. And this will play an important role in the next step. So now we need to use the torque equation. So we can substitute this all back into the torque equation which if you recall from a couple uh, steps ago, was equal to I times R cross DL cross B, the purple term. So we solve for the purple term after the differential product rule and the vector identity, and then we substitute it in. All right, so we see here that um, after this, we can integrate, and when we do that, we find what the torque is. Uh, we're gonna have to have some closed integrals and so forth, and we can see here that, um, again, with uh, B being constant and things of that nature, R cross R cross B would tend to go to zero here um, in the closed loop. And then we have uh, minus the contour integral of B cross R dot R cross DL. Okay. So after the zeros there, we've got a minus sign to take care of. But we also have that R cross DL is just equal to 2A. Again, that's just a simple geometric interpretation. So we cancel out the twos, and then we have I uh, times R times negative B cross A. 
Again, anti-commutative, so flip them, but put a minus sign, and we have two minus signs that cancel, and we're left with IA cross B, which indeed is N cross, which is indeed N equal M cross B, A being the vector area, and we're good to go.